building, located in a back street, far from the conventional palace of the tourists, once housed a church. For the past 60 years, it has sheltered a unique theatrical company whose stock in trade is horror, together with avarice, murder, and mayhem. These are the principal ingredients of Le Théâtre de la Mort, the theater of death. Mademoiselle Giraud's dressing room, please. Top of the stairs. Thank you. Shall we go in by car, Ellen? Okay, where are you parked? Around the corner. Don't rush, Pierre. We've got plenty of time. So it was you. What was? Well, who else do I know would spend a fortune sending me opening night telegrams? <laughs> Something to go with them. Oh, you're, you're too kind. Charles, sit down. Thanks. You know, everyone was very impressed with those. I hope they were. I went halfway around Paris to make sure they wouldn't all come from the same post office. You did really. <laughs> oh, in your own dressing room, eh? Ah, yes. It's a fresh start. You see? I told you everything would be all right. Well, if you hadn't taken care of me, I couldn't have done it. All oh, rubbish. Well, did you see the show? No, they laughed in my face. Back stalls next Thursday was the best they could manage. <laughs> Still, judging from the applause, you had a big hit. Do you really think so? Definitely. <laughs> Are you doing anything this evening? I wouldn't like to quarrel with an actress, particularly on a first night, but isn't that supposed to be the man's line? But, Darvis, our new director, is giving a party. And, um, I thought you might like to come. Wouldn't they all think me a little out of place? Nonsense. It's just a costume party. And, um, try that on for size. <laughs> <laughs> well, come on, Charles. <laughs> Please, of course, darling. Oh, you don't need it. Fame, fortune, successful marriage. I can see it all there. The fortune teller's Colette. She's the wardrobe mistress. And that's Joseph. He's the prop master. He's very nice. And that is Nikki Chapel. She's my roommate. There. Now, the key cards are the Queen of Hearts. Signifying a young and beautiful girl. The Three of Cups. A happy marriage. The Three of Pence. A wealthy marriage. The 
lightning struck tower, disturbance, an emotional setback, shock. Deadly Reaper. Death. You don't want to worry about that, Vicky. That's the only one. Don't believe it, do you? Well, I'm certainly not going to let it bother me. Vicky, I'd like you to meet Charles Markham. Charles was a good friend to me when I needed one. Oh, yes. Fanny told me. I think it was marvelous what you did for her. I'm sure she exaggerated. It's nice to meet you. Well, I don't know anything about his theatrical ability, but Darvis can certainly throw a good party. He's a very good director. Oh, there's Madame Angelique. She's the owner of the theater. Come on, I'd like you to meet her. Excuse me. I'm sorry to bother you, but I'd like you to meet my friend. Madame Angelique, this is Charles Marcus. How do you do? Well, what did you think of the show? I couldn't get tickets for the opening. I'll make up for it soon. Good. I hope you'll enjoy it. A great honor to meet you, madam. Will you excuse it? But of course. Thank you. You're glad to be back at work, eh? Well, it's not the ballet, but it is the theater. And you, doctor, when are you going back to work? You are very persistent, aren't you? Well, I haven't had an answer yet. I'm having treatment. It's still nothing like full control. If you wanted your job back at the hospital, could you get it? Oh, yes. They think I'm marvelous. Whatever happened to the other driver? Got six months. Six months? Is that all? After what he did to you? Well, I gave him something to do in his spare time. What are you doing in your spare time? Oh, don't laugh. I'm writing a novel. What? Well, why not? Doctors make very good writers because they know so much about people. Philip. Well done. What a wonderful party. Ladies and gentlemen, Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention for a moment? I want to thank you all for your hard work that has made tonight's opening such a resounding success. But I think most of the credit should go to our director, Philip Darvis. Madame Angelique, members of the company, this evening is one of special significance, of special joy to me. Twenty-five years ago this evening, my father produced his first play in our theatre. His old man gave a party in this very room. Thank you. You'd never think it was Thank the you. same place the way As he's modernized saying, it. He used to say that the theatre of death was his life. And indeed, why not? After all, the theater is full of paradoxes. And in order to maintain that tradition, the Darvis tradition, I intend to make it my life also. Philip, because tonight is such an occasion, won't you tell them some of the plans for the future? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. As you wish. Mademoiselle Chapelle, Mademoiselle Giraud, would both of you come up here for a moment, please? Over here, Danny. Right. Uh, that's it. Right there. Music stand. And that chair over there. Nicole. There's something wrong. Wouldn't you rather have someone more experienced to read for you? If I had wanted somebody more experienced, I would have said so, wouldn't I? I sit down. I 
want you to do exactly what I tell you, Nicole. You understand? Exactly what I say. You see darkness. Nothing but darkness. The room and all the people in it disappeared. You hear nothing. Nothing but my voice. Everywhere is dark. No sound but my voice. No sound but your voice. Thank you. What you are about to see now is a scene from a sketch entitled The Witches of Salem. The story concerns two sisters. When the older of the two has misguidedly caused the death of the younger's lover, the vengeful half-crazed girl has her elder sister proclaimed and tried as a witch. The part of the elder sister, Sarah, will be played by Danny Giraud. The part of the younger, Prudence, by Nicole Chappelle. You understand? Time, 1692, Salem, Massachusetts, spring night. Place, the darkened town square, prior to the burning of Sarah Fletcher as a witch. In the background, the sound of the approaching townspeople. The wood is piled high around the stake. In the foreground, Prudence Fletcher approaches. Sarah? Sarah? Prudence? Oh, for the love of God, help me. Untie me. They're coming. But I don't love God. That's why I can't help. Did you think I'd let them burn you? No. No, I knew you wouldn't. But hurry. Undo me. I can hear their footsteps. They'll be here soon. Don't be frightened, sister. Did you think even for an instant? that I'd let their rough hands set light to that raven hair, or let them roast that sweet young flesh, or turn that velvet skin into nothing but a handful of cinders, when I, and only I, have that right. Before, sir, have we? No, we haven't. Lesson number one, my friends. Always catch your audience. Involvement, the number one priority in all good theatre.
Want me to call Dr. Bernard? Wait till the morning. Charles, I expected you hours ago. Sorry, I've been to a party. I didn't see your note till I got back. Have a good time? Yes. It was to celebrate the new opening at the Theatre of Death. They ought to see the real thing. That'd have put them off. They're pretty realistic, you know, George. Even give me a shock or two sometimes. Uh, old rolling eyes and tomato ketchup. <laughs> you are an old cynic. Ever met a policeman who wasn't? All right. It's too late to argue about it now. What did you want? I'd like you to take a look at these. Switch off the lines, will you? Three of them. Exhibit A. Hmm. Exhibit B. Victim two. Recent? They've all been over the past month. And here's the third one. Oh. All stabbed in the neck. And each one with a... What is it? Triangular-shaped wound. Proving that the murder weapon was the same or of a similar type. Yeah. The chances are that they were all murdered by the same person. Well, obviously, a mere policeman couldn't jump to such conclusions. Switch on the lights, will you? Any obvious connection between the victims? I mean, except that they're all women. No. The first was a midwife up in Montmartre, coming back from a confinement. The second was a waitress from an all-night cafe in the Rezal. And the last was a high school girl on her way home from a music lesson. No sexual assault? No. Well, Ferdy. Yes, Inspector? Get me the reports from the pathology lab on the three knifings, will you? You'll have them in a minute. How's the hand? Oh, I'm still having physiotherapy and electric treatment. Any improvement? Not so you'd notice. I can drive a car. I can even write after a fashion. The one thing that I really want to do just because you can't use a scalpel is no reason not to practice medicine. You were one of the best young police surgeons we've had in years. Are you going to start that again? It's a ridiculous waste, Charles. You should be working. Yes, well, I'll decide that when the time comes. Wine or brandy? Brandy, please. Did you meet Darwin? Yes, quite a character. So was his father. He disappeared, you know. The case was never solved. George, have you ever seen anybody hypnotized? They did a sketch at this party. I've seen patients hypnotized, but never anyone as responsive as this girl was. Who did it? Darvis? Yes. Extraordinary. I thought she was going to kill the other girl. Well, that's the theater for you. Probably find out she had a bigger part in the next production. Oh, no, no, there was more to it than that. Well, maybe he's doing his thing early on her. Maybe. Here you are, Inspector. Oh, thank you, Ferdy. If you want to pop out for some food, I'll look after the tenants. Thanks. The traffic around here does give one an appetite. A photo from the scene of the crime. And that was the waitress. Not much blood, is there? No. Odd, isn't it? Are they all like this? All stabbed in the neck, jugular vein or cartridge artery. And scarcely a drop of blood left in the body or around it. I see. Well, in highfalutin medical terms, that's what we call a hematajac. Someone who needs human blood badly. In your language, it's what you call a vampire, isn't it?
Morning, Danny. Morning. And how are you today? Wonderful. Shouldn't I be? Do you sleep all right? Mmm. Wasn't that a fabulous party? Oh, fabulous. I'm such a head. I must have enjoyed myself. Hey, are there any reviews? Yes. What are they like? They're great, Shelley. Look. And look at this. Look. <laughs> Here we are. Do you think we dare pay the rent? Oh, I think we pay the rent and buy curtains and a new bedspread. What do you think of that? Fantastic. You know, I must have been quite tipsy. I never could drink champagne. A couple of glasses and ugh. I didn't see you drink that much. Neither did I. Maybe I have my eyes shut. Anyway, I don't remember a thing. Not after Davis asked us to read for him. Did I make a hash of it? No. So you don't remember anything about the sketch, then? Not a peep. Was Davis pleased? I should think he was delighted. You're not just saying that. After the sketch, you fainted. I never fainted in my life. Well, you did. You were so worked up, I thought you were going to kill me. Kill you? But I didn't know. You didn't. But Darvis did. You see, he hypnotized you. You could have killed me and you wouldn't have known a thing about it. You're exaggerating. I'm not. Look, Nikki, will you promise me one thing? What? Don't see too much of Darvis. He is only the boss. Any time I spend with him, I'm lucky. All right. Inside the theater, that's one thing. But outside, that's something quite different. Danny, you're not jealous, are you? No. I'm just scared. Nicole Chappelle. I wonder. A girl so young to have such sadness in her eyes. It was winter. There was no food, and my family decided to cross the Alps into Switzerland. They loaded their caravan with such things as they had, and they set out. We were with a dozen other families. It was an avalanche. It was snowed under in a pass high up in the mountains. Couldn't go forward. Couldn't go backward. No, no, no more. No need to be upset, Nicole. You're doing quite well, really. Am I? Why, yes. After all, it is rather a slow business. You see, acting, in the true sense of the word, in my sense of the word, is a function of the unconscious rather than the conscious. Do you understand? I think so. You think so? But do you know? I want you to think of me as a... Well, as a master builder restoring a cathedral. Before you can build up all the new ideas, you've got to tear down the old. Well, that's exactly what I'm doing with you. I'm removing all your mannerisms, your inhibitions, your prejudices, all the things that you've learnt, that you picked up, that you've been taught at second hand, all the half-baked notions of good and evil. When your conscience is asleep, that's when we make progress. When you walk out onto the stage and you have the right inflection and you make the precise gesture, you may not know exactly where it comes from. Or that I've used it before. Precisely. But deep down inside, you will remember. Philippe, I couldn't go on without you. I hope you may never have to. Nicole, I'm going to show you what it means to act not from the surface, but from the soul. It's when you can make him laugh and him cry. Like this. 
frightened as a baby with a rattle. Just what the hell are you thinking about? I'm hungry. I missed lunch. <laughs> I suppose you realize I could ram this right through your delicious little stomach, do you? Please, you're hurting. Don't feel quite so hungry now. Perhaps even a little frightened. Poor Heidi. All of you. No She's gonna you. cry for a week. Hey. She had it coming. She's Don't stupid. Fancy telling like Dava she felt hungry. Oh, come off it. You think it was a matter of life and death or Please, something? Please, I'm trying to listen. But by thinking murder, feeling it. Remember that feeling, Heidi. Oh, uh, why did you go to Darvis's today? Patrols and galleries. People have played good money. Nikki. You really oughtn't to get involved. Perhaps it would have been better if he'd invited you to his house. Involvement, the secret of good acting. You good rehearsal? Huh. Charles, yes. What are you doing here? Well, the Institute of Medical Studies is just over the road. I'm working there for a few days. Mm, how convenient. Danny, do actresses ever get hungry? You're asking me for a date. After the show tonight, supper. <laughs> I warn you, it's very thirsty work. I must run, because I'm in the next sketch. I'll find a restaurant with a big cellar. Lovely. Oh, what a beautiful thing. Can I have a look? Certainly. Toledo blade. Yes, but you don't get the craftsmanship today. I used to get those by the dozen. You've got many left. Or every year one or two gets broke, three or four gets lost. I've got a young nephew, birthday coming up. If I wanted to buy one of those, do you think it'd be possible? Well, you might be like at a second hand shop, but these are not for kids, you know that, don't you? I mean, a man who knows his trade, he could put an edge on one of these. Thank you. You got her in the wrong place anyway. You should have put her over here. You hear this? Well, it's hollow. It's a trap door. The tip of the spear is supposed to go through there, not hide his blood. Is that clear? Well, we go through the scene again, starting from the top. Uh, excuse me, sir. Yes? If you can spare a moment, Madame Angelique would like to speak to you. All right, you take over. All right, let's do it again. If we can't do anything else right, let's at least try to move correctly. You wanted to see me about something? Yes. Hope I didn't take you away from anything important. No, no, nothing that won't wait until I get back to the rehearsal. I've been reading your new sketches. Well? Well, they're remarkable. Not even your own father could have improved upon them. I'm flattered. And without appearing to be more egotistical than I'm reputed to be, may I say that you are entirely correct. However, I don't suppose you asked me to come all the way from rehearsal just to tell me that. No, I didn't. I seem to remember, Philip, you told me there were going to be 12 sketches. There are only 11. Yes, that's quite right. The last one is about the corrupting influence of evil upon innocence. Still a bit of research to do, so it may take a few days. Good. Now, the voodoo sketch. What about it? Too strong for you? Thank you. No, I'm sure it's all right. Too near the truth, perhaps. No, I'm sure it's fictitious enough. I beg your pardon. It couldn't be more true. Every detail in that sketch is based on fact. You surprise me. I've seen some of the ceremonies myself. Fascinating. Mm. I'm sure these cannibalistic rites are still practiced, but what about the production problems? 
Such as what, for instance? The transformation of the old chieftain's wife into the beautiful young girl. Hardly a problem. Flicker of lights, puff of smoke. There you are. Don't tell me you've seen that, too. Not the immediate transformation, no. After all, one does have to have a certain amount of dramatic license. I really must get back to the rehearsal. Uh, just one moment. That is one other thing. Just a small detail. What's that? Nicole Chapelle. What about her? You say quite rightly the show needs speeding up. I still thought that was quite obvious after last night. Quite so. You also suggest that some recasting would help. I do. I think my notes prove it. Quite so. I'm not arguing with them. But you suggest putting Nicol into four of the sketches. Five, including the Faustus one. Nicol is a very sweet child and a most promising young actress, as we saw at your party. I agree. But she's only been acting professionally for a few months. So? Do you think it wise to place so much responsibility on someone so inexperienced? My dear madame, if I didn't think so, I wouldn't have done it. The Tramp, known in every mission in Paris. Same triangular-shaped wound? Same absence of blood. And first male victim. I don't think that's of any significance. Take him through. Have you seen this morning's papers? Well, four unsolved murders. The taxpayers are entitled to see something for their money. You're not seriously suggesting I tell them about the vampire? No. Nikki, are you in? Won't be a second, Danny. Why didn't you wait for me after the show? You said you were going out for dinner. Oh. I completely forgot. I owe you an apology about that scene at rehearsal. It was bitchy of me. I'm sorry. Oh, it's always like that at the beginning of a new season. Late nights, rehearsals, parties. Everyone's always on it, so forget it. What are you doing with that dress? Sorry not to give you any warning, but I'm moving. Tonight? Yes. You're moving in with Darvis. It's what he wants. Well, what about you? Is it what you want? Yes, it is. At least I think so. Now, Nikki, look. No, it's no use. Don't lecture me. I just can't help myself. You know what Darvis is like. He twists people up and then... Hello. Pigal 3506. Hello, Danny. Charles here. Oh, hello, Charles. I'm calling from backstage. Didn't you forget something? Like me, for instance? <laughs> I just the second remembered. I'm awfully sorry. Really, I am. It's all right. I was ten minutes late myself. This may be the jet age, but it doesn't make it any easier to cross Paris. You're completely exonerated. I don't know what to say. How about uh, some other time then, Charles? I'd love to. I'll call you. All right, thank you. Good night. Good night. I'm so sorry. 
Ah, my impressionable friend from the play reading. Monsieur Darvis, can I offer you a lift? Thank you, that won't be necessary. I live nearby, I can walk. It will give me great pleasure. As you wish. Where are you going? As soon as I finish packing. It's about creating your sketches. I travel a lot. I also have access to a great deal of my father's material. So you're interested in the theater, are you? Well, certain aspects of it. Your closing number, for instance. The execution? Yeah. Undertones of vampirism. Undertones? I hoped it was more explicit than that. Perhaps it is. I'm not an expert. Does the subject of vampires interest you? Yes. Would it surprise you to know that there are four unsolved murders on the police files at the moment? All done in the accepted vampire tradition. And all within the last month. I don't read the papers. Well, certain aspects of the cases were played down, of course. How very wise. Isn't it odd that you should have a sketch about vampires while all these murders are going on? Yes, isn't it? These murders, who were the victims? Uh, there were three women and one man, all stabbed in the neck. Naturally. The weapon was a strange triangular-shaped blade just like the ones used at the theater. I get out at the next corner. Yes. Uh, I, uh, I, uh... I was aware of your other afflictions, but I didn't know that you stuttered as well. I just left Nicole. How very interesting. She said she was moving in here. Yes, that's quite correct. Provided you don't object, of course. She's only a child. It may not seem very important to you, but in that child, there is a spark. It's a spark which is very deep down, but it's a spark of pure talent. And it's just possible that I may be able to fan that spark into producing an actress, uh, not a broken down ballerina, but a Bernhardt or a Garbo even. But asking her to move in here. Why should that concern you? 
Unless, of course, your interest is rather more than that of a well-meaning roommate. You're either a prig or you're jealous. And I don't think you're a prig. I've caught some of those sidelong glances of yours, you know. However, now that you're here and you've seen fit to interfere, I think I'd better tell you just why you're so unattractive, both as a woman and as an actress. Come over here, Mum. Now, take a look at yourself. Take a look at yourself. Look at that makeup. It's ridiculous. That eyeshadow is grotesque. We're actors and actresses here, you know, not dying swans. Of course, I do realize that with your background, you can hardly be expected. What do you mean? I'm glad to see that your accident hasn't affected your powers of hearing, as it apparently has your speech and your mind. Don't look so surprised. As a director, I make it my business to find out about the backgrounds of my artists, their strengths, their weaknesses, and I happen to know you spent the last two years in a mental institution. That's not true. I, I, I was in a hospital and then a, a convalescent home. I mean, it was just a breakdown. That's all it was. You're a misfit. You're only happy in the presence of deformity, aren't you? That's why you came to our theatre, wasn't it? You're a failure. I never want to see your pathetic little face again. Either in my house or in the theatre. I didn't mean it. Oh, but I do. I'm going to speak to Madame Angelique in the morning. You're dismissed. What am I going to do? Oh, I shouldn't worry too much about that if I were you. If you find that the outside world is too tough, there's always the asylum. And if that fails, the river. Goodbye, mademoiselle. Serafina. Good girl. You're a perfect lady, aren't you, Serafina? Away from that man. found Monsieur Davis's body, and there's no positive proof that he's dead. Technically, he's listed as a missing person. However, we have found his hat and cloak, both covered with blood, so there's a strong possibility that he has been murdered. Now, has anyone any questions? You'll let us know when there's any definite news. Of course. It doesn't mean that we can't leave Paris, does it? Because I was going for a day's fishing on Monday. That'll be all right. Well, I won't detain you any longer. Thank you. If he's not dead, then what has happened? I agree, a man doesn't just disappear. His father did. Well, how? Nobody ever found out. Nico? Nico, how do you feel about tonight? If you'd rather not go on, tell me. We'll put on an understudy. Thank you. I remember when I was about your age, there was a man much older than me. I was crazy about him. We were very close. Finally, he died. 
For months, I was inconsolable. My dear, we all know how you feel about Monsieur Darvis. If you think you can go on without him. I don't know, madame, but I can try. Good girl. You're worried about her, aren't you? Charles, are you coming? Shall be a minute. The inspectors asked me to sit in on this investigation, unofficially, of course. In the meantime, until they catch this lunatic, I'll pick you up every night and take you home, all right? Okay. Half the company seemed to think Darvas was a genius. The other half thought he was a bastard. Pretty fair estimate, I'd say. Why didn't you tell me you drove him home? I didn't think it was important. Charles, you know better than that. You were probably the last person to see him alive. The last but one. Don't forget the murderer. I'm glad you reminded me. Oh, come on. Anyone would think I was suspect. Wouldn't they? Didn't forget anything else, did you? Like going inside, having a nightcap, a couple of items like that? I dropped him on the corner. Didn't see anyone hanging around the house? Did you? <laughs> no, of course not. You know what I think? I don't believe Darvis is dead. Why do you think that? Oh, it's just a hunch. And if he's alive, he's going to try and contact Nicky Chappelle. You want me to have a tail? No. I'm going to do it for you. The prefect will be pleased. By your little friend Danny. How are you going to play it? I'll visit all the known Darvis haunts, the Tuileries, cafes he used to go to, the places he visited, the park where they found his cloak. I wouldn't bet my shirt on it. Why not? I think he's dead. No. No, I knew you wouldn't. But hurry. Undo it doesn't me. look as if you have anything to worry about, madame. Soon. Don't be frightened, sister. I didn't think she could go Did on. You think even for it's almost as if Darvis was still here. Set light to that raven hair. Or let them roast that sweet young flesh. Or turn that velvet skin into nothing but a handful of cinders. When I, and only I, have that right. was doing. It was exactly as it was at the party. Well, there's nothing extraordinary about that. No. Well, who hypnotized her this time, then? Well, she could have done it herself. How? It's not as rare as all that, you know. People used to do it quite often during the war. Frightened men going through battles by rote. Hypnotized, to all intents and purposes, by themselves. Functioning by recall. Reciting training pamphlets themselves. Things like that. Well, you know the end of the scene. Just before Nicole plunges the torch into my face. Yeah. Well, she stopped cold and stared right into my eyes. Most effective. You, you don't understand. And I, I know it won't sound rational. But at that moment, when Nicole's eyes were fixed on mine, I would have sworn they weren't Nicole's, but Darvis's. When your conscience is asleep, that's when we make progress. When you walk out onto the stage using the right inflection and you make the precise gesture, you probably won't know where it came from. But deep down inside you, you will remember. She's not there? No. Then where can she be? Well, she's either dropped off somewhere for something to eat, which I think is highly unlikely, or... Or what?
What's happening? Well, he's probably given her sodium amytal. It'll relax her, make her more easily able to talk. Charles, he is a good doctor. He's probably one of the best psychiatrists in Paris. Now, don't worry. Well? I agree with you. Self-induction, voluntary or otherwise. Yes. Well, could this stem from the time that she was hypnotized at the party? It can, but I'd say, I'm guessing mine, I'd say she'd been hypnotized since then, possibly more than once. Well, how can you tell that? From the few things she has said. Well, can you break this, uh, uh, whatever you call it, trance spell or...? Probably. It'll be a slow process, though. A matter of weaning the subject away from one set of influences or behavior patterns to another, and then restoring her confidence till she can stand on her own two feet. <laughs> Sounds very involved. It can be. A lot depends on her. Before this happened, was she a stable character, or was she excitable, neurotic? Well, um, she was um, apt to be moody, mm -hmm. and uh, didn't take much to excite her or to depress her. I'd like to know how good the hypnotist Davos was. You see, mademoiselle, most of them preferred to work with well-adjusted, easygoing people. The neurotics, the suspicious types, they usually shun them like the plague. Why? because they are unpredictable. You may go and join her if you like. The effects of the shot should have worn off by now. Oh, thank you, Doctor. Not at all. Mm. Should she go on working? <sighs> yes, I think so. I can see her in the mornings. I'll buy your theory, Charles, but I never before have met the subject so strongly affected. I know you told me Davis was dead. Who am I to contradict you? But I'd say someone was still controlling her. but I think your friend the policeman was right. I think Darvis is dead. Do you? I'm not so sure. Well, all the murders have stopped since he disappeared. Till last night. What? Colored girl. I didn't want to upset Nikki. Just the same routine as before. Be in the papers tonight. Well, why are you so sure it's Darvis? Lots of little reasons, but one in particular. When I told him about the vampire angle, he couldn't get out of the car quickly enough. It was almost as if I told him his house was on fire. Where, where's Nikki? We, she went over that way somewhere. We really ought to go.
Nikki, come on, we have to go to the theater. Nikki, what is it? What's the matter? There, down there. What is it, darling? What do you see? Philippe. He left as soon as he heard the sound of your voices. of Davis's plays? Yes. He certainly knew every facet of the blood lust syndrome. Carl, have you ever come across a hematagiac? Well, yes, occasionally. It's rare, but not unheard of. I don't mean the fanged instant regeneration brigade like you see in films. But I've known cases where patients had a persistent craving for human blood. A physical craving? Physical, mental, what's the difference? The point is not whether the body needs the blood, but whether the mind is convinced it does. Hmm. Well, how does this sort of thing start, then? I guess it's as good as mine. I'll tell you one thing, though. I would like one hour with the man who conceived that sketch. Darvis left behind a notebook with some new sketches in. He was working on one at the time he disappeared, I know. He didn't finish, then? No. Madame Angelique said he had some more research to do. Listen. Find me that manuscript, and then we might make some progress. trying to find one of Darvis's sketches. I saw you talking to Dr. Schiller at the theater. Did you tell him about Nikki seeing the reflection in the water? Black or white? Oh, black, please. Yes. He's surprised that if Nikki did expect to meet Darvis, she didn't try harder to get rid of us. Sugar? Thank you. She was very upset at reading about the murder tonight. Well, the police are drafting an extra man to find Darvis, dead or alive. Of course, what they really want to know is whether he died in the same way as the others. Does that matter? Is it really important? Well, yes. Because if he did, then whatever else he might have been, he wasn't the murderer. What if he is alive? Then sooner or later, I should imagine he'll be having an early morning appointment with the guillotine. Danny, although there might be something keeping Nicole here, there's nothing holding you, you know. You wouldn't want me to leave her here alone, would you? Well, somebody else could look after her. No. I mean, she trusts me. She needs me. Hasn't she got any family? Her parents died when she was a baby. I don't know the details, but she lived in orphanages and foster homes. Then she finally ran away and started living hand to mouth. You know, odd jobs, singing in cafes. That's where Darvis found her, wasn't it? Yes. It's impossible to think he's dead. Or that he ever will be. Danny. If you're so anxious to go on staying with her, at least give up the theater for a while. Well, that man understood one thing quite clearly. The only situation that I'm capable of functioning in is, is this sort of theater. Oh, rubbish. You're not ill anymore. That's the sort of hysterical claptrap that Nikki believes in. Let's talk about something else. Like a brandy? Thank you. You know, there are two practical advantages to this sort of babysitting. Hey. 
The baby doesn't give us too much trouble. And B, we can enjoy Darvis' excellent hospitality undisturbed. think she's all right at this moment i don't give a damn plays well. And your wife is still the best cook in Paris. Ah, tell her. Is she a French girl? Uh, not by birth, no. Truly, I have the most remarkable wife. Isn't that right, Charles? Absolutely. She never sets foot in the restaurant. The kitchen is her province. Yet she knows every single thing that happens in here. <gasps> Could be embarrassing. <laughs> you are right. She says, who is the Romanian girl? But how did she know that? <laughs> she recognizes the tune. You came from Romania, then? At the end of the war. <laughs> what an experience. Andre, I need you a minute. All right, coming. Excuse me. Well, now we know where she comes from. She seems to be enjoying herself. But, um, there's no sign of Darvis. I don't think he's going to show up. If he was, she'd know it by now. If you will excuse me, I'll go straight up to bed. You're tired, darling. Mm. Thanks for the dinner, Charles. It was a lovely place. Thank you for the entertainment. Good night. Good night. Good night. Is it my imagination, or is there an improvement in Nicky? Yes, I think there is. The restaurant didn't pay off as far as Darvis was concerned, but she seemed to enjoy herself. Yes, they're friendly people. Nice of Andre to ask us back. Only if Nicky played for them. Asking her to leave her guitar behind as a guarantee. Charles, what is a de Leon complex? It's a Freudian term. It refers to someone who's seeking eternal youth. It's a Peter Pan complex, if you like. Mm. Shirley seems to think that Darvis was suffering from it. Oh, Danny, can we talk about something else? You know, I think that Darvis Sr. and Darvis Jr. are one and the same persons. What? Yes, you know, like Dorian Gray. 
you remember at the end of the book where the young face and body decayed and rotted in front of everybody's eyes? Danny, for heaven's sake, now stop talking about dumb. There's nothing supernatural about him. Alive or dead, he's no different from any other man. On this, forget it. <laughs> Just Darvis dropped in for a nightcap. Nikki?
It is winter, the Italian Alps. World War II has just ended. A solitary gypsy wagon is stopped by an avalanche in a little traveled pass high in the mountains. Andre? Yes? Read this. Well? Don't those names ring any bells? Constantine Anna? No. February 1946, crossing the Alps. Two wagons behind us. Oh, come. Now you remember. You think she is their daughter? Could be. Constantine and Anna were in the same party. Things became too hard, so we'd all decided to go to Switzerland, all about 40 of us. We set out in early February. February? Over the Alps? All oh, right, so we were mad. We were all so desperate. There was nothing else we could do. Anyway, an avalanche blocked the pass. We couldn't get through. Some of the men killed one of the horses and distributed the meat, but a baby can't live on that. There were four of them in Constantine's wagon. Him, his wife, the baby Nicole, and the young boy, a cousin or something like that. When we finally dug out the wagons, we found something monstrous had happened. The mother, Anna, she was desperate, seeing her child starve to death. She killed the boy and fed the baby on his blood. Several travelers discover the wagon containing the baby and its dead companions. So you're the killer. I had to. And Darvis? I thought he loved me. But he only loved the theater. He was using me as the basis of his last sketch. His ultimate portrait of black and white. I couldn't let him. Who would have realized it was you? He wanted me to play Anna, my mother. They're bound to find out as soon as they discover the body. They already have. It was on the radio. Well, then... They know he's not the murderer. And, uh, killing me isn't going to help you. I don't want to kill you, Danny. But now you know the story, I have to. Just as I had to kill Philippe. You're the only two who ever found out. Look, uh, why don't you go to the police and confess? I'll stand by you, and, and so will Charles. Too late. Ah, uh, Nikki, you're ill. Dr. Schiller will prove it. I mean, having to live with this for the... It wouldn't make any difference. They'll just put you in a hospital. Like they did to you. Well, it's your only chance. No, Danny. You are. Now Davis is dead, the police will be looking for someone else. Someone mentally disturbed. And they'll find you. And you'll confess. You'll tell them you had to do it, Danny. You had to kill them. All of them. You had to do it, Danny. You had to kill them. All of them, Danny. You had to kill them. All of them, Danny. You had to kill them. All of them. And so, begging forgiveness for the horrible things that I've done, I end both this confession and my life. Good. Now sign it. Go ahead, Danny. Write your name.
No, this is Danny. And it's all over. Go on, take it. Stand up, Danny. a blonde girl come by here? Yes, sir. She's just gone into the stage door. Right. Call Inspector Michaud. Tell him Nicole's the killer and to meet me at the theatre immediately. Try in there.
you any luck? No, perhaps you slipped out the front. But you won't get far, I've got men all over the place. search the theatre from top to bottom. Even Darvis couldn't complain about that screen. But I didn't scream. Well, there's George, didn't. just a minute. What did you say? I said I didn't scream. I don't know who it was. Sketch 12 by Philippe Davis, The Caravan. If he knew that story, he must have known she was sick. Mm. That's why he had her move in here, get it all down on paper. He must have realized that sooner or later she was bound to get caught. I suppose he thought he was immune in some way and she wouldn't kill him. Well, he certainly had a great deal of control over her but he was vain enough to think that it was complete. He wanted to turn tragedy into comedy, comedy into tragedy. Theatre de Mort, the theatre of death. The audience can satisfy their lust for blood. Here you can buy horror, terror, and all the thrills of macabre entertainment and go safely home when the final curtain falls. But its evil influence cannot be confined to the stage. Christopher Lee as the fanatical director. 
fanaticism bordering on insanity. I want you to do exactly what I tell you, Nicole. You understand? Exactly what I say. <laughs> Goldoni, the leading lady, once a ballerina. Now her twisted talents enhance the theater of death. You're a misfit. You're only happy in the presence of deformity, aren't you? That's why you came to our theater, wasn't it? Julian Glover, the surgeon, caught up in the sinister life of the theater and in love with its star. Danny, what is it? What's the matter? Leave me alone. Danny, stay away from that man. Jenny Till as Nicole, the young girl possessed by the vicious powers of evil. Somewhere among the imaginations which create the theater of death is a killer for whom the world of let's pretend is not enough. Would it surprise you to know that there are four unsolved murders on the police files at the moment? All done in the accepted vampire tradition. The alleyways of Paris, the make-believe world of the theater of death becomes a terrifying reality. I've spent my entire career in front of the camera, I think, doing two things. One of which, well, both of which I think I've succeeded. I've tried to surprise people. I've tried to do something unconventional that they don't expect. I've tried to say or do something somewhere where, which makes people sit up and think, ooh, that was funny let's say, or that was amusing, or what a sense of humour, which of course happened in the Bond movie, The Man with the Golden Gun. Scaramanga has a great sense of humour. It's, it's lethal, but he has a sense of humour. So, not an ordinary thug, you see. There's the difference. Unexpected, unconventional. Same thing in Theatre of Death. You think this man is a ruthless tyrant in the theatre. You think he is, but I surprise people by not being the character that they think I am. I have quite definitely proved a great many people wrong. The people who said, you're too tall to be an actor, you're too foreign looking to be an actor, you only do horror movies, you can't escape from Dracula, some idiot put that in the paper on Sunday, like they never write about Sean without referring to him as 007, or Roger Moore, always. So you ignore it, and simply isn't true. It doesn't annoy me. I think it's pathetic. So I'm proving people wrong all the time. The person who wrote that bit in The Independent on Sunday, last Sunday, as a headline to the piece, they said Christopher Lee cannot escape the curse of Dracula. The person who wrote that is never going to be able to escape the curse of being thought a complete idiot for having written something like that, because it isn't true. And the proof is on the screen. I have been on record and I continue to say it, that, in my opinion, in the case of the Dracula films, because there was this demand, they just kept going. What happened was the degeneration of quality. And as far as the Dracula stories were concerned, I became progressively disenchanted. I said, look, this has nothing to do with Stoker's book, nothing to do with Stoker's character. You're writing the story first and trying to fit the character in afterwards, which is exactly the wrong way of going about it. And, as I've said before, and I can repeat it again, because the people concerned are no longer with us, I turned down all but the first two. There was a gap of seven or eight years between the first and the second, in which I didn't speak at all. Then I made whatever it was, four more, I think, three or four more, I can't remember, over the years. 
every single one of those stories I turned down and said, no, I will not do it, I don't like the story, it's nothing to do with the character, and I don't want to play the part anymore. I can't do anything more with it. What happened every single time that no got back to Hammer was I got hysterical telephone calls. You've got to do it, you've got to do it, you've got to do it. And I said, I don't have to do it and I don't want to do it. And I'm not going to do it, but you've got to do it, you have to do it. You must do it. And I said, why? Which perhaps was a foolish question. The answer I got was, because we've already sold a film to the American distributor with you in the role, otherwise they weren't interested. And here comes the crunch. Think of the people you'll put out of work if you don't do it. So what do I do? Am I going to be held responsible for putting 90 to 100 people out of work? Actors, actresses, directors, writers, producers, technicians. How could I? So I did them. And that is the only reason why. It certainly wasn't for money. Well, some of the films have been accepted as classics, I gather. I wouldn't have thought the last two, but maybe the other two or three were obviously entertaining, were very well accepted, very well received, and the audience enjoyed them. I have to be honest and say that I didn't. Take a look at yourself. Look at that makeup. It's ridiculous. That eyeshadow is grotesque. Strange film, Theatre of Death. Strange film, interesting film. What really appealed to me about it at the beginning was the fact that the director, Sam Galou, informed me that he had sung tenor with Toscanini. So, of course, off we went into opera right away. We sang at each other all through the film. It might have been a better movie, actually, but uh, we did. And uh, so we had very much in common, and it was all opera and singing. See, and he something. would sing something, I would sing something. It's amazing we got no work done. I have nothing but happy memories of it, uh, of the company, my company, in the film. All lovely people. Dear Jenny Till, a beauty, who went on to work for Cameron Mackintosh. That was the last time I saw her some years ago. And Lelia Goldoni, I think. And of course, Julian Glover who's one of our major actors now. Julian has not only done some very big pictures, played some major roles in them, but of course he's done an enormous amount of work as a major classical actor in Shakespeare, in, in the theatre, which is more than I've ever done. You surprise me. Flicker of lights, puff of smoke, there you are. Don't tell me you've seen that too. Not the Dear Evelyn Lay, now there was a legend or Boo Lay, as she was called, I have no idea why, was one of the great figures of the English theatre. She was an excellent actress. She was in a lot of light comedy. She was in a lot of musicals. Absolutely enchanting. And a legendary name. I mean, really, a legendary name. Do you think it wise to place so much responsibility on someone so inexperienced? My dear madame, if I didn't think so, I wouldn't have done it. I was very much in awe of her as anybody could understand, and she was very sweet. And she must have been then in her middle eighties, or thereabouts, but you wouldn't have known it, because word perfect, full of energy, lovely, lovely lady. I think most of the credit should go to our director, Philip Darvis. And I played this rather bizarre character. I played a few, and he's the director of a theatrical group who bullies people, who's a bit of a tyrant, and he scares the life out of his company by apparently threatening them, all sorts of things. I suppose you realize I could ram this right through your delicious little stomach, do you? Please, you're hurting. And, uh, well, of course, he is a red herring, a very acceptable one. So everybody thinks that he is the killer. I 
I don't think I'm giving anything away when I say that he isn't. <laughs> Yes, the Lyric Theatre Hammersmith, indeed, yes. The theatrical scenes were shot there, yes. It was a very popular theatre, and it put on superb productions. I used to go and see uh, Donald Wolfitt and his company in the Lyric Hammersmith. He used to say that the theatre of death was his life. And indeed, why not? After all, the theatre is full of paradoxes. I intend to make it my life also. <laughs> Grand Guignol, of course, I never saw in Paris. I, I wouldn't have been allowed to, I was too young. Because although I did see the last public execution in France in 1939, it was because somebody took me, a friend of my family's, and uh, I turned away at the crucial moment, but I shan't ever forget that. Grand Guignol, Big Guignol, was of course the theater of horror, of real horror, not just of death but the most appalling things happened. And some very distinguished actors and actresses played in Grand Guignol, both in France and elsewhere. The theater was in Paris and people flocked, you know, right, rather like spending the whole night in the Chamber of Horrors in Madame Tussauds. Can you do it? Will you survive it? Will you remain sane? People fainting in droves, I know that's true because I've read a lot about Grand Guignol. I've read about some of the sketches they put on. I've read about some of the things they did. Absolutely appalling, putting people's eyes out with red hot needles and things. I mean, you can imagine this in the 30s. Far worse than anything that's ever been seen on the screen. Terrible scenes of torture, blood all over the stage, mutilation, decapitations, everything. And this was done in public, in the theater, in Paris. And people flocked. So tastes haven't changed all that much. Mm -hmm.